The Spirit is our guide and abiding proof that we are the sons and daughters of the Lord. So stay with us tonight as we talk about how that Spirit of God should be reflected in our lives. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Paul G. Kagans, and all of us here at the Master's House. We welcome you. So glad you tuned in to wrap up our series on Galatians, and it's been a wonderful series. Um, I loved everything that we've shared. It's been great. And everything that Brother Thomas and, and Brother uh, Corey have shared. Uh, it's been very insightful, and I, I just love, love every piece of it. It has. It has. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, from Galatians 5, verse 16, all the way to um, the last verse there in chapter 6. So, Brother Howe, thank you so much for being here, sharing all your wonderful insights, and I'm glad that we are matching today. We, we are. <laughs> How does this we, happen? And plan it, but great minds, they think alike. coordinated. That's it, and I'm colorblind even. <laughs> Who knew? Well, we made it. We made it anyways, but if you would, Brother Howe. Would you now take us before the Lord in prayer over this Bible study? And, and I forgot to mention, if you have a prayer request, please, please email those at prayer at mastershouse.org or click the link below in the description. And we will definitely lift up your needs before the Lord, asking the Lord to come in and minister and heal, set free and deliver because he is faithful and he hears each and every cry. So Brother Hal, if you would. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so thankful for you, Lord, because your love is so great and so awesome in our life. We are so thankful tonight, oh Lord, that you have the ability to touch our heart. We know you're God, but oh Lord, you have touched our heart in such a special way and taken us out of those bondages that are in the world and given us liberty and freedom to enjoy in serving you and we are so thankful for that thank thankful for your blessings thank you for the healings and the things that you're going to do even in this hour oh lord as you move across the world as you move across this country and across this city oh lord jesus your mighty power is doing great things we pray that you will bless this great study tonight with your precious spirit we ask all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's let's get right into it because me and Brother How we were just talking, there is so much. A lot. I mean, verse by verse. We could really go verse by verse and just expound on it. You could probably spend a sermon on each of these verses. Uh, but we're going to try and wrap this up in 30 minutes in, um, in a chapter and a half. But so kicking off right off the coattails uh, from last week, they, they kind of wrapped up talking about uh, fulfilling the, the commandment, the second commandment, which fulfills all the entire law, which is to love one another. And then on top of that, a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, there in chapter three, verse two, that Paul posed this question, you know, to, uh, to all the churches there in Galatia. He says, how did you receive the spirit? Was it by faith? Was it by the law? Obviously, it was by faith. That's how they received the Spirit. And Paul and the churches there in Galatia knew they received the Spirit because the most common sign that the Spirit was being poured out was that they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. How do we know today, after receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, how do we know that the Spirit of God is still in us? It's kind of this question that we're, we're going to answer here a little bit. So we're going to talk about some of these attributes, attributes that should be developing in us, that should be present in our lives. Right now as God-fearing Christians that should be present, this is what Paul was saying, these things should be present in, yours, in your life yes, there at Churches amen. in Galatia. And um, they should not be present is some of these works uh, of the flesh. So verse 16, let's finally get to it. Verse 16 there in chapter 5, it says, This I say then. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. 
But if you be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Right? So the last two lessons here in Galatians, that's what we've been talking. We've been talking about the spirit and how that's there should be their focus that the spirit has now come in and it came in by faith and not by the law. So walking in the spirit, again, we could spend a whole hour right here. Walking in the spirit means more than just receiving the spirit. Oh, it does. You know, it means I yield as key word there. I love using the word yield because I think that really just defines it in my mind. Anyways, in my heart, I yield to the spirit of God on a daily basis. And, and maybe even more so than just a daily basis, but every step. Oh, yes. I mean, we're talking about walking in the spirit, right? We are. <laughs> so every decision I'm yielding, meaning, what, what am I talking about? Yielding to the spirit, meaning I want God's will. I'm desi- the spirit wants God's will and I'm walking towards God's will yes. in a particular situation or a particular area of my life or in my entire life altogether. And I'm not wanting to follow my own fleshly desires. So the, uh, the only way to not carry out the desires, if you picked up on this, the only way to not carry out the desires of the flesh is to walk in the spirit. You know, that verse again, right? Walk ye in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the key to not fulfilling the, the, the terrible sinful flesh that's in me is to walk in the spirit. That's the victory. That's where I can get um, power to overcome these things. So it's really important to point out that the wants of the flesh are the exact opposite of the spirit. Again, we're still in the verse, first three verses here. I'm trying, I'm trying to get wow, through we, it. We could, we could be here a mighty long time. So another point right there uh, to walk away. So yeah, they're the exact opposite of the spirit. They're contrary to one another. So Christians... Remember, Paul's talking to the churches of Galatia. Christians have a war going on. They do. We have a war that's going on. We're not immune to these just because we're baptized in the Spirit of God. The key is to keep walking in the Spirit of God. There is and will always be a war until I start learning to yield and I yield a little bit more every day, and I yield a little bit more the next day. And then I, I begin so comfortable in this yielding to the Spirit of God, allowing it to go first, it to lead my path, it to lead my decisions, not my fleshly desires. So that brings us to the next point here. What are those fleshly sinful things? And Paul gives us a nice little list, and this isn't exhaustive by any means. And Paul even alludes to the fact that it's not exhaustive. If we go to verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. So he, he left it open-ended right there, such like, all right? Of the which I tell you before, and listen to this right here, of the which I tell you before, and as I have told you in times past, so this is, I'm repeating myself, Paul is saying right here, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Pretty, some pretty strong words. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, right there, not inherit the kingdom of God. And again, as, as I kind of already alluded to, uh, this letter is written to the churches in Galatia, and he's reminding them, he's reminding Christians, the, the Gentiles that converted into Christian, the Jews that converted into Christians, these Judaizers that we've been talking about, he's reminding all of these people, they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They needed a reminder. And Paul, led by the Holy Ghost, this is the inspired word of God, said, I need to remind you, these are the works of the flesh. And, uh, and in fact, in today's time, in today's time, the church is under so much attack to be lenient or passive on some of these issues that I described there. We're not, we don't have time to go into any of the, all these issues that, that some of the local assemblies, and this is sad, some of the local assemblies have just straight up ignored what Paul said. And just try to look the other way, saying, well, because it's the 21st century or whatever it is, whatever excuse you want to throw out there. They've been lenient 
on some of these things. And Paul sent a reminder to the Galatians. And when the, the letter to the Galatians was written, I think 50 AD or somewhere around in there, give or take. And 2,000 years later, we still need to be reminded. Don't be lenient. Don't be passive. These are the works of flesh, and they who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, Brother Hal, we, find, we got through five verses. So, Brother Hal, we've learned, uh, you know, what following the flesh is like. What should our life look like when we allow the Spirit of God to start leading us? Well, i like to point out, first of all, all of that big list there, uh -huh. you don't even have to work at that. <laughs> there, there's nothing uh, but humanity there. It, it's, that's like falling off a log backwards. It's just easy because it's the flesh. It's the way yeah. people are made. But what you got to work at is going against the grain there. And God's ready to help us. He's ready to do things like we never dreamed he could do. If we'll do what you just mentioned and yield to him. But it's work. It's not easy. In Galatians, the fifth chapter, and this is uh, no doubt many of those that are watching tonight, this is probably not only familiar, but probably a, a, a very common thing that people think about when they think about the book of Galatians. Starting in the 22nd verse, in the fifth chapter, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. These are things as human beings, unfortunately, human beings want these things the things of the flesh but do we want these things in this walking we're talking about no what we're seeking for then is what does God want what does God, God want today what does God want for the next five minutes what what does God want in this decision I'm about to make if we live in the Spirit, in the 25th verse, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The dynamic life full of things that God wants. That's what that list is all about. These are the things God wants. Not just thoughts. Not just words. Anybody can talk a good game. But actions. Things that actually manifest themselves to be a testimony to others, to ourself, even in our own mind, when we see the Lord's Spirit well up within us. And we've all heard of that scripture uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, the, the love chapter, it's called, uh, and it ends as many of us will recall that it says, now abideth these three, faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity, meaning love. But the interesting thing is, that's not the procedure. That's not the process of how you get to love. Those things weren't enumerated or listed in the order that they must be executed. In other words, if you don't have hope, you're not getting to faith. Mm -hmm. So you won't get to that other one either, love. Right. Now the first step is you've got to have hope rise up uh, in your heart. And, and of course, we, that's what we want in these Bible studies, that, that it would spread this hope that would spring forth and blossom into faith and blossom into love. Well, the real question is, of that, that great list we just read about the things God wants, the fruit of the Spirit, the real question is, how does one do it? Mm -hmm. What is the procedure? Is there 
and order of events or do we just jump in and say okay uh, I think I'm going to just let love prosper in my life well I've created a little or uh, what we call a pyramid chart uh, and there's a lot on this chart that we could talk about in Bible study but we're certainly not going to rehearse this chart it is only intended to show that most likely this list of fruits of the Spirit was actually listed in reverse order. The first thing that's got to happen if we're going to get up to the top of this pyramid, which is love up there, right? Down at the foundation of everything is meekness. We're not talking weakness here. We're talking the opposite of being prideful and arrogant and stiff-necked and not flexible according to the things God wants. Meekness. And then temperance right there. Being moderate. And the, the scripture actually tells us to do that. To be moderate in all things. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the extremes because it can get you in trouble. Uh, and be slow to anger. Temperance. And this sets the stage. To move into faith. Of course, we don't want to lose that hope. Got to have that hope in there, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Move it on into faith. And these other things that are listed here. Long suffering and gentleness and goodness, joy and peace. And, and I'm telling you, this is not an easy thing to do. I don't know about you out there. But I can tell you, I have to get up every morning and I have to do my very best to humble myself before the Lord. Lord, touch me. Help me not to be pres presumptuous and just think I know everything and I've got the answers because you're the one, Lord, that's got the answers. And this is the day, as, as we've said many times in our studies, that mm -hmm. that. that psalm this is the day the lord hath made he made it but he made it for us to execute this divine plan and to yield to the spirit and allow us to learn what goodness really is the spirit can teach us that we may think we, what we know it is but I'll tell you what, when you start yielding to the Spirit, I think you know what I'm talking about out there. It, it, it just begins to move throughout your mind and your heart. And it becomes natural when you start yielding. It, then you don't have to work at it because you started with meekness. You started with that attitude of being slow to anger and I, I make that point that's the that temperance part because you know there's a a lot of things that can really tick you off every day <laughs> get you I, really off track we see that across the world all the time <laughs> yeah, golly you it, I, uh, anger is a rough one uh. and if, and if we can overcome that and be slow to anger the scripture says be angry and sin not now see that's uh, there's a good kind of anger but most of that anger out there is just things that's going to get us in trouble, get our mind going. We might be mad at somebody. Whoop, wrong track we're on. And we're not going to get into the rest of that, up that pyramid to that love. Yeah. I like, I like what you said there about, you know, you have to get up every morning to yield. You every do. morning. Brother, how you've been serving the Lord for so many years and you love the Lord with all your heart. I know it, I believe it. Your testimony just shines through to so many different people. But yet, like you just say, I get up every morning. I have to yield. It's true because we're still flesh. It doesn't mean because I'm walking in the spirit now, all of a sudden, all fleshly desires are gone away. We got baptized in the Holy Ghost. All flesh is just dissipated into nothing. No, they're still there. Now I just have the power through help of the God, through the spirit to yield to the spirit of God as it leads me. Oh, yeah. It Praise can overcome Lord. all those fleshly yes. desires. And, and that's the point here. 
we all, no matter how long you've been serving the Lord, no matter how much you know the Lord, we all need more meekness and more temperance. But yeah, the key is to yield and to yield and to keep practicing and practicing at it like you were saying. And yeah, it, the fleshly desires should get less and less and weaker and weaker, but it doesn't mean they're gone. So let's continue on though in verse, uh, verse one of chapter six. It says, brethren, if, any, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. There's that word again. Spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Oh, yes. And that, that verse 3 there, that was a, that's a long-time joke that we used to say on the construction site all the time and uh, with, with Brother Thomas. So. But, um, you know, so often we forget. We forget a thing when we're talking about the brothers in the Lord, because that's what, that's what Paul's talking about here. We forget that this striving to be Christ-like is difficult at times. We don't always yield perfectly all the times. And guess what? My brother and the Lord, they are human. They are human. Sometimes I want to put them up on a pedestal, high up there, especially people in leadership type positions. I put them high. They can do no wrong. They have conquered all fleshly desires. They have conquered it all. They are still pressing towards the mark of Amen. the prize of the high calling, just like I'm pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. And so I need to remember that. Don't be judging against them. Don't think myself to be something when I'm nothing. The key, the key to all of it is that we keep striving. We keep pressing towards that mark. Don't deceive ourselves. Don't let pride or ego trip us up when we look at a brother and sister that may be struggling. I love that word grace. Uh, I think of grace as the credit card of faith. <laughs> In mm -hmm. other words, grace is giving you credit for something you don't even deserve. Isn't that the way the Lord treats us as if we never did anything wrong? He just blesses us. We stumble and fall. He blesses us. I know you can make it. Get up. Come on. You can do this. I know you got what it takes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's grace. And that's just the way the Lord wants us to treat others, the way he has treated us. He wants us to, to be merciful. He wants us to have that grace and to give people that encouragement and help that they need to take the next step because they may, they may be having a rough time making that next step. In Galatians, the sixth chapter, Beginning in the seventh verse. Now, here's one. Everybody knows whether they've read the Bible or not. This next scripture, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, the reaping, that return trip coming back at you, uh, may be different than what we think. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of things that Maybe we've sown that was negative, and we planted those seeds, and they grew. Uh-oh, here comes our <laughs> chance to be merciful and graceful and, and temperate. Don't, don't get angry, because here it comes back. But then, by the same token, those seeds that we sow to the Spirit, wow, those are good seeds. Going on in the eighth verse. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting, life everlasting. It reminds me of the scripture, all these things we're putting together here with the fruits of the Spirit and all, of a scripture that's in Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse, we all know it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things, you know, are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, 
If there be any virtue, think on these things. I, when, when I got to that part, if there be any virtue, man, that's, that was like a great big neon sign flashing light that just illuminated a great deal of perspective and a paradigm change. If there be any virtue, and uh, I think of that as, is there any profit? Now, if I, I criticize my brother, is there any gain? Is there any profit? Is there any virtue in that? Is, is, is that going to do anything? If I make fun of them, put them down? What, is there any gain in that? But what if I give them grace? We're talking virtue now. We're talking something that can encourage and lift people up. I don't know how many times the Lord has ministered to me with grace. And I realized, Lord, I didn't deserve that. I did nothing to deserve that. And you just pick me up, set me on my feet, and I'm off to meet the challenge. Well, that's, that's amazing. That is amazing thing that really happens and it's full of gain, it's full of profit, it's full of virtue. Those are the things we need to think about. Those are the things that need to come out of our mouth. Those are the things that need to be demonstrated in our actions. Sowing seeds of faith, of hope, of kindness, of forgiveness. Mm, well, that's, that's the answer that's a big one right there yeah yeah uh yeah well, wonderful i mean if we continue on right here uh in verse nine it says let us not be weary another very famous verse oh yeah let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap i mean we could just keep quoting that verse every day to yourself every day every day in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men, especially unto them of the household of faith. So th this walk in the spirit, we've been talking about all these wonderful meekness and forgiveness and love. And oh my goodness, those are all contrary to the flesh. They are. They're difficult. They feel difficult at times. And trying to do good and trying to do these things, but not necessarily reaping the reward immediately, which is when we want it, right? We want the reward of doing these nice, good things and living a, a life of faith and hope and, and all these kind of things. We want the reward of it right there and there, but we don't see the reward. So then we get weary. We're like, well, is this doing good, you know, meaning anything? Paul reminds the Galatians right there, don't be weary in well-doing. You can keep walking in the Spirit because there will be a reward. There will, and you know, like you said, what, what you put on that, that wheel will come around one way or another. It may not be exactly the way you think it's going to come around, but it will come around. Yes, it will. And, you know, if, it's so cliche that, you know, so many times they— they make this into the movies. There's, there's the same plot over and over again. The plot goes something like a man's trying to live right, but then, you know, in his struggles of living right, and we're talking about living right according to God's will, living right, he, you know, ah, time goes on, he just curses God because bad things just keep happening. Trials keep coming. Tests keep coming. And, you know, his bank account is still negative. So there's no rewards yet coming in for all his righteous living that he's doing. And so what does he do? Well, now, you know what? I'm a bank robber now. I'm going to go, I'm going to go take matters in my own hands. And so he gives up. And that's what Paul's saying to the Galatians. That's what he's saying to all of us. Don't give up. Yes, don't you give will, up. will, you will reap. Paul's encouraging the Galatians. He's encouraging us. We will reap the reward in due season. And it's true. This is God's word. We can count on it. We can stand on it. That's a firm foundation. We can believe in those scriptures you're just talking about. So we, there's no, no reason to be weary in well-doing. Keep it up. Keep going. Because it's going to happen. It's going to, the, the door's going to open. The light's going to come on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see the light of day. 
the Apostle Paul also was trying to get it through the Galatians' head, what really matters? He, he didn't really ask this question, but in another sense, he did. Because mm-hmm. he's trying to tell them, here's what really matters. Come on, you're hung up on all of this stuff. Uh, let's get down to what really matters. In Galatians, the sixth chapter in the 15th and the 16th verse, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. A new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb to walk in the newness of life. And that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. Jesus uh, gave that example uh, in the New Testament. He says, do, do you put wine in old bottles? No, no, no. You put it in new bottles so that it preserves it and it keeps it or else it just come to nothing. And so it is with our spiritual body. We get the newness of life when the Spirit of the Lord comes into our life. But sometimes people in the Galatians did this. They try to hold on to the old stuff. Yep. It's just not worth it. Going on in the 16th verse, he says, As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The Lord is ready to bless us. The, we need his help doing that. We can't, we could, we could try to do good works, you know, or try to mimic all of those fruits of the Spirit, but that's an effort in futility because it's of the fruits of the spirit yeah and he will work in our life but uh, it's true i have to get up every morning and say oh lord yeah. help me do it help me do it well i think i think that beautifully wraps it up um the the entire book of galatians you know we've talked a little bit about circumcision and these judaizers coming in trying to mess things up and and the galatians were falling backwards they were they were bewitched you know, as we talked here a, a couple of weeks ago, and Paul ends in this, these last chapter and a half, talking about how we need to start letting the spirit lead us yes. instead of letting our flesh, the desires get the best of us. And that's the same thing we need to do today. And it takes right from Brother Hal's lips every morning, yes, it waking does. up <laughs> and yielding. It does. Yielding. There will be a benefit. We think, um, you know, I want to do what I want to do. Mm. Man, it, this leading, letting the Spirit of the God lead us will lead us into that joy, lead us into that peace that really, that's what we really want in our heart, in our peace life, in our Lord. family's lives, and in all these situations. That's what we want. And the key is being led by the Spirit of God. So we hope someone's been said. Uh, today and all throughout the study of Galatians, we hope that something's been said has been a blessing to you, has been an encouragement. Uh, I encourage you to go watch the entire series again, or you can find it again on our website at mastershouse.org. And again, if you have those prayer requests, please email those at prayer at mastershouse.org or click the link below in the description. So Brother Hal, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything you, you have shared. And if you would now, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Loving Jesus. We are so thankful tonight because you have chosen not to just merely be with us, although that would be great, but you have chosen in this hour to be in us. And oh Lord Jesus, we're thankful because that's the only way that we can truly manifest these wonderful fruits. If we learn to yield to you and help us do it, Lord, Help us yield as never before. Help us think on the things that are lovely, pure, and of good report, that are virtuous, and that are worthy of praise, 
We thank you, O oh God, because we have you on our side today. You are not going to leave us nor forsake us, and you're ready to help us succeed. We thank you and praise you. We ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good night, and God bless. <laughs>